So now, moving swiftly along, we have the case where the energy is more than the potential. When this happens, we will have what we call an unbound state, okay, logically speaking, and the energy values would form a continuous spectrum. So the energy values for a particle can take a whole range of values, all right? This is what, you know, we need to be familiar with. So I'm going to sketch it over here, okay, so for us to really see what's going on. So let's just say that the energy value is between V1 and V2. Now, uh, you don't need to know that again, but as X tends towards minus infinity, the motion of the particle will be oscillating in nature. Okay, it'll be oscillating until it comes over here, at which point the energy is going to be less than uh, V2, and then the motion will be decaying like so, like this. All right? Now, uh, maybe you can notice that I have uh, had the, the assumption that the energy is between V1 and V2. This is what we call an unbound state. Okay, but we will also have a, an unbound state okay, if the energy is larger than V2, in which case the motion is oscillating you know, throughout um, both directions, minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay? Uh, yeah, basically, the energy value is higher than the potential for all the cases. Right? So that's why we get a continuous spectrum. Now, uh, again, doing the classical analogy, okay, and it's quite easy to visualize as the comet, okay, is moving towards the Earth, okay, the potential of the Earth is not strong enough to attract the comet. So you see the Earth is here, the comet is moving, moving, moving. What happens if it's a bound state, it will be bounded around the Earth, correct? But now it's not, so it will just move and it will not be trapped into the Earth's atmosphere and it will just fly off, okay? So the motion is not confined at all. It's not confined. The comet is moving and it's not confined at all. That's the best classical analogy I can think of. Right, uh, the continuous spectrum, okay, motion of the particle is not confined, okay? We can see over here that, you know, it's, it's not confined. It go all the way to minus infinity, okay? For this case, this case is going all the way to minus infinity and plus infinity, okay? The probability density may be oscillating or decaying at x plus or minus infinity as I drawn over here, like so, okay? Decaying and is um, oscillating, okay? And the motion is infinity in one or two directions. Now, uh, yeah, so I say again, you know, really we got two different types of, of states, both of which are continuous. So both of which they will have a continuous spectrum, okay? And this is when, you know, uh, it's infinity in this direction, it's infinity in both directions. So that's all you need to know. Right, now, what about degeneracy? Well, I can say this, okay? Uh, for this state, okay, for this state over here, where it's oscillating and decaying, okay, in one direction at uh, both ways, this would be non-degenerate, okay? Non-degenerate, just like the bound states. And this would be degenerate, okay? And more specifically, two-fold degenerate. Now, I, I can't give an explanation for that, but all you need to know that the, the reason why, why that happens has to deal with the linear dependency of the solutions, okay? Uh, for this case, um, you know, there are two solutions. The, 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 time, the time independent showing the equation is a second order, right? Second order, as you can see over here, second order. So we will have two linearly uh, independent solutions, right? Independent solutions. But since for this motion, okay, it is bounded at x plus infinity, this area here where we have two linearly independent solutions, we need to reject one of them, okay? We need to reject one of them because there is no physical meaning, okay? And because of that, uh, that it becomes non-degenerate. There's only one solution left, it becomes non-degenerate. Non Whereas for this case, you know, it's oscillating both ways, you know? The solutions will not be, will not diverge, okay? That's because it's oscillating, will not diverge to towards infinity. That's why these two linear independent solutions correspond to the two-fold degeneracy, okay? But uh, you don't need to be uh, too caught up on that, okay? Just, just know what degeneracy means in case when somebody asks you what's the degeneracy in quantum mechanics, you can explain it to them, right? So uh, before we end off, end off our study, which I think is good so far, we just need to talk about uh, one last thing, okay, be before we wrap up, and that is called the uh, symmetric potentials. Now, this uh, is a potential, right? So, what happened? What do I say the, if the potential is symmetric? Well, uh, that would mean that, okay, give me a second, minus uh, potential applied to minus x is equals to vx. All right? Uh, this isn't, a, I didn't draw it so like this. As you can see, they are not symmetric. But when this happens, something special happens, okay? Now, when this happens, we can say that the Hamiltonian, okay, remember, the Hamiltonian is this thing over here, right? Uh, it's, oper it's operated on the, the wave function, so the Hamiltonian is uh, an even operator. 
Okay, now I hope you can see that. Uh, basically, X is only evolved over here in the potential. So if the potential is even, okay, we can say that the Hamiltonian is an even operator. Now, when that happens, okay, we will isolate the cases for non degenerate. So, not degenerate, okay, that's why it's good to know the term and for degenerate, okay, uh, something different happens. All right, it can be shown that a non degenerate even operator, okay, that a non-degenerate even operator, the Hamiltonian is now an even operator because the potential is even, a non-degenerate operator commutes, okay, commutes with uh, what we call as the parity operator. Okay, uh, don't, you don't need to know what parity operator is. But what we do know that when this happens, they share a common basis, okay, they share a common basis. And the parity operator, the basis of the parity operator are, is an even or odd state. Okay, so it's an uh, even or odd state. So phi x for, for phi minus x is equal to plus minus uh, phi x. Okay, I hope I got it right. Yes, I did. I did. Okay, so if it's plus x is gonna be uh, even, right? And if it's minus uh, phi x is gonna be odd. Okay, plus or minus. So that's what we, we have. Okay, and that means because of this, a non-degenerate even operator commutes with the, the, the parity operator, the states are even or odd. This would apply to a bound state. Okay, bound state. So we can, this will aid us in our journey to solve the time independent showing the equation. Okay, because if we know that the wave functions are even or odd, you know, we can do some manipulations over there. Alright, so this is a bound state. Remember, bound state is all non degenerate. Now, if degenerate, okay, uh, what we can say is that we can express the solutions, express the solutions um, as even and odd states, okay, in terms of even and odd states, okay, so it's not, uh, sorry, even and odd states, okay, so it's not even or odd, in which case the, the wave function will be even or odd, but basically uh, we can express the solutions as a uh, linear combinations of even and odd states, so they may not necessarily be even and odd themselves, okay, and this has a term for it, this is called definite parity, definite parity, Okay, if it's even or odd, and this is uh, not, not, not definite parity, okay? So that is all that is to it, okay? Studying the potentials, knowing when the energy of the particle when compared to the potential is more than or less than, where if it's less than, we get what we know as a bound state. If it's more than the potential, we get what we call as an unbound state. All the properties follow. The energy values could be either discrete or continuous, you know, uh, degeneracy, non-degenerate, oscillating behavior, but all this, so what we are going to do now is use this mathematics, use the mathematics of the time, or use the mathematics to solve the time independence shown the equation, and then see all these properties that we have anticipated, okay? Because they did the study and this actually is what happens, okay? So next lesson, we'll move straight into the mathematics. We cannot wait any longer, so we're going to time to use mathematics to solve the time independence shown the equation, okay? But today, I hope you understand these things called bound states are bound states, right? So thank you.